Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlink here, we're off for a very late edition of What's in the Treasure Chest. Now, my birthdays came and went, and we did a live stream of that with Mario Party 4, and, well, I didn't do this video on that very day because, well, stuff was coming through transit. Basically, stuff was pre-ordered, stuff didn't come out until now, or it didn't arrive until now, and, well, instead of, you know, just only covering couple things I'd rather wait until we had it all here and then I can do the video and that makes a lot more sense plus it's also before the 26th of May and that's a perfect segue because the first thing I'm going to show you guys and this is important is that on the 26th of May I am going to MCM Comic Con. This is my ticket, basically. That's why I did that very quickly, so you can't exactly see it. This piece of paper is my massive A4 ticket, and that is my ticket to Comic Con. I have to thank Super Mario for getting that ticket for me. And yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to a convention, and I haven't been to a convention, so I mean, the only thing that was close was um, the premier, the Switch premiere event, actually. Uh, that I went to before the Switch was actually released. If you remember, I, w I pretty much showed off everything that I did there. We also had an opportunity to win an actual Nintendo Switch. I got a little pick collector's pin for filling out the, uh, all the stamps or playing different games or whatnot, like Slipper Clips, Breath of the Wild, uh, even Sonic Mania and stuff like that. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Splatoon 2. So that's a thing. And hell, so sometimes at these conventions they also have like little booths for you to play upcoming games as well or even have little tournaments because the Space Kitsune or the Merc's blog has been doing that recently if you check out his Twitter. So I'm naming a lot of people already. <laughs> but yeah, haven't been to one before. I'm going to be going in all my like Zelda gear. That'll be my uh, Zelda hoodie, my uh, Shika Slate t-shirt. Probably if it's a hot day I'll be wearing my Zelda cap as well. That's very classical. Either that or a Star Trek cap. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure if I want to wear my Zelda necklace or if I want to wear Kara's necklace from the uh, Undertale uh, Classic Edition, which is in that box over there. So those are a few things I want to make mention of as well. But yeah, um, thank you for the ticket. That's probably like the biggest thing thus far. And that's, like I said, on the 26th of May this year. Second on the list is pretty small. It's a joke card. Let me read it out. Dear son, how would you like a brand new Porsche for your birthday? Or Porsche, some people pronounce it differently. But then when you open it up, it says, if that thing wants to flip, there we are. Here's the toolkit to get you started. But yeah, and yeah, you get like a little toolkit there. You get an actual like little pair of screwdrivers. You get a, uh, a flathead, a crosshead, and a point. So yeah, so... I know this isn't really like anything too big, but for one thing, here's one thing, I did not know that cards like this actually like, you know, came with little things like this, so that was a mind, that was first of all a mind blow when I opened it up, I was expecting like, you know, just a message, or maybe a voice box, maybe a pop-up, you know, something that cards normally have, not an actual like, practical thing that you can literally have in your pocket pouch or in your bag, and if you have like a problem or something, you got yourself prepared, well, ish, I mean, they're, they're quite small, I don't know how durable they are, haven't used them yet, but they're still pretty useful whenever you need them. So, can't complain about that, and I like the card too, it's pretty funny. I mean, I like Top Gear, I mean, and Grand Tour, not really an issue there, but yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> oh, an HDMI wire, <laughs> and it's gold plated as well. It's just, um, oh, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh my god, there is so much wire here, it's unbelievable, dude. Look at all that wire! <laughs> it's like 20 meters, 20 meters of HDMI wire. That is insanity. And let me just bung that behind there. Yeah, um, I could probably, you know, take the footage from anything up here, like for my laptop or something, play it on the TV downstairs with a massive wire. It's a thing I could do. Yeah, I don't know how to uh, talk about a massive wire such as that. I mean, I've been using it for um, recording. I mean, there's no latency. Think about this. I could have, like, you know, my TV um, or my laptop up here, and I could be playing stuff downstairs without needing to stream. But talking about that, and I just want to make mention of this right now, even though it doesn't actually have anything to do with what I'm talking about, because there's not really much to talk about with a 20 meter HDMI wire such as that. But my dad got that for me, by the way. But on your mobile devices, on the 21st of May, which hopefully this video will come out beforehand, because it's been recorded on the 19th, 
YouTube, as I've said already. Steam are going to be releasing a Steam Link app, so you can actually use your phone to technically remote play or stream your stream your Steam library from your computer that you have ready, so that you obviously you know the hardware is used, and you basically just stream play that on your phone. So it's like you know with the PS Vita with remote play for PS4 or you know the PlayStation TV. You basically have that in another room, and if you have decent internet connection, you can literally play your games on another system or TV. And that's basically what they're doing with the phones, and that's pretty cool because that means you can have like Freedom Planet. Uh, um, Undertale, not entirely sure about One Shot, but uh, Hat, in, Hat in Time, Night in the Woods, like all those games, for example, or even just more high profile games like Team Fortress 2, or, you know, mess about with Gmod, I don't know. But there's so many, like, games there. Heck, if, you're, if your PC's really good, you could be playing um, uh, Watcher Free or whatever it's called, or even, you know, Skyrim on your mobile device. And that's only because it's using the hardware of your laptop, you just need an internet connection in order to play. I don't know if you have to pay for the app, because I haven't heard too much information about it, other than it's coming out on the 21st of May, but that's a really good app. But I thought I would talk about that, because soon we're talking about connections with the big, long HDMI wire. But that's pretty cool. <laughs> So I just mentioned one shot. Now here's the thing. This is definitely one shot related, but it's not like any like merchandise that's actually been out right now because they're not like from the game. They're just T-shirts with Nico on it or something like that. But the thing is that Merrill uh, Connor Meza, he recently played the game as well, and he had a thought of ha having like a 3D printed like or. They, they have like the special plastic sheets that you can print colour on, and then you like shrink melt them onto like a 3D wooden cutout or something, and you pretty much like make a 3D printed with prop like co like colour onto um, something. I, I don't know how, how it's explained, he'll probably say in the comments down below if he watches this, um, but basically he couldn't do that, so he thought of another thing, and he thought of... Nico's scarf, and uh, that's this is it's pretty basic. It's just a you know, it's just cloth, like you know, how a uh, scarf normally is. I don't even wear scarves that much, but he's got like these tassels like sewn onto the end, similar to how it is in the game. I mean, it's not exact, but then again, you could chalk that up to the game's s graphical style or resolution. I mean, this is probably how it would be in real life. It's the pr it's the same blue ish, it's like I said, got the tassels and. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't wear scarves, but I still love it because, you know, it was intended to be like a one-shot reference, and I love one-shot. It's such a good game, and, you know, feels and whatnot. But, yeah, um, thank you for that, Mezzas. I mean, he's the same one who got me that neck, the, uh, f um, the Hyrulean Crest necklace, because I, I, because uh, he just found it one day, and he got it and gave it to me and that was it so I don't, I don't know how to talk about this really it's a little bit awkward but at the same time I just love one shot and I can't recommend it enough so thanks for that mate awesome So I think we need to get back to games in the mainstream instead of like, you know, um, getting all somber and whatnot and over emotional with one shot. Um, not saying, you know, we don't we don't need to dwell on that, but this is actually pretty awesome as well, considering it was actually pretty um well I say pretty but I would say pretty rare in some cases because they hardly ever seem to have these in stock. And that is the light up dock shield for Nintendo Switch by PDP. I think I said Hori in a little pre-recorded video that I made about this, just setting it up for the purpose of this video, because it's already set up and it'll be a little awkward to, um, you know, unbox. But basically, if I can get into this, um, basically it comes with two dock shields, one based off of the Sheikah Slate, as you've seen on the front of the box here, but as you can see here as well, you get a um, Super Mario Odyssey one as well, and I want to show that off. So, let's get that out quickly, and there it is, there's the shield. Now... It does not look blue. That's because there's two protective films that are really sticky, but also really uh, hard to get off. But you need to get them off because otherwise you don't get the full proper um, glow from the LEDs of the dock. But of well, the dock, the dock shield. You know what I mean. But like I said, you get two of them. I think there are additional ones purchasable, so that you have the choices and stuff. But this is supposed to retail for like twenty quid or something like that um, around here. But I've seen it go up for as high as seventy dollars on the U. Um, Amazon 
and not only that but they were really low on stock so for the risk of not accidentally repeating myself one off on the video i've already recorded let's jump to actually setting it up and having a little look at its features all right so i've got the hori dock shield here i've actually got one of the two shields that that came with it i've already shown the sumail odyssey one in the box but this is the sheikah slate one and notice that it's not blue you have to take off two very thin but very sticky uh film coverings and that's pretty much what makes it blue you want it plain white like this so don't forget to remove them i've seen a lot of people that don't actually watch the video on uh, amazon showing you to remove those so we've got this here we've got the, the little dock shield which the, your dock actually sits on and we've got the dock itself now first of all i want to spin this round because um, i've already got the usb attached because i've got one hand but if i pop this open here and uh, well if i can turn it up into the light there i've got the wire the usb wire to charge it it's micro usb by the way connected so i can close that up spin this round and pop it on these two grooves right here you see those grooves that's where these feet go on to so if i just pop it like that like so it fits in nice and snug like so now a bit smudge now you put this in the little slot at the front there and then if we go back to the side here three buttons right there there we go so across you got power then you got color then you got mode so let me turn this back around so i can show you how this works we press the first button and we got power so you got white color you got red so it's like yiga clan you got a green you got a blue you got a yellow you got a light blue or a cyan or turquoise or whatever you want to call it or neon and then you got like a magenta like pink which looks pretty sweet to be perfectly honest with you and of course we've got white again so if we go mode now basically when you choose a color it is always permanently on that color like solid but if you press the mode button it will go in you know, like a strobe effect so you have a strobe effect you have a fade effect you have um going through all the colors in a kind of fade effect and as I said, you got a strobe, which is slower, and then you got a very fast strobe. This is pretty good. So if it was like sitting exactly where it is, and then I just zoomed out to my set, now that looks pretty sweet, to be perfectly honest with you. Of course, I can't exactly show you too much, but that because that's really what it does. But these are actually pretty rare. So yeah, um, as I've already said, th this was like only tw it's supposed to be at a retail twenty quid. I got it a little bit cheaper, but they only had four left in stock on Amazon UK. And these things I've seen go up to as high as seventy dollars on the American one when they're low on stock. So whenever you see this at retail price, or if you just see them in stock for pretty much what it's worth, pick it up because I this is just like a little nice set piece to have, and it also makes your dock look nice without having to like stick decals on the dock and yeah i mean like i said you can have so many different variations and like i said you got the sumo odyssey one as well looks really good in the red but for this one i would suggest either the blue the magenta the blue or light blue because that is pretty awesome staying on the nintendo accessories train we've got the metroid amiibo yeah these things were rare and expensive weren't they well guess what they're back in like um, plentiful quantity on Amazon and it was actually at the proper retail price of $12.99. I don't know when they started to bump up the price, maybe it's because of the Nintendo Switch red branding? I don't know, because you know they used to be alongside the Wii U and 3DS, but yeah, this one's a squidgy amiibo and it also unlocks the fusion suit as long as concept art on uh, Samus Returns, which is the Metroid 2 remake on 3DS. Um, now, I prefer this one other than the Metro the uh, Samus amiibo, not because well, the only Sam the Metroid amiibo I've got is the Samus Smash amiibo. I'm talking about the Metroid um, Samus amiibo, but uh, from those two, this is the one I preferred getting, and um, yeah, it's squidgy. Now, there's only one concern I have with this is the squidginess like gonna not be squidgy after some time if it's been left out too long or is it sticky so it's a nightmare to keep it from getting dusty i don't exactly know about that and that's because i haven't opened it up yet but i will be doing that soon and uh yeah so that is a nice little um amiibo to add to my little shelf over there where alongside waluigi uh ocarina of time link and captain falcon so <laughs> Yeah, Captain Falcon was in the kind of similar state of that as well. It was never in stock for a decent price until all of a sudden, hey, he's now a mainstay back in the mainstream and stuff like that, but I don't know. Why are they making a Star Fox Grand Prix? If that rumor is true, I hope to God it ain't.
And lastly, the adventure begins again. Holy crap. Definitive edition. I've beaten the original 600%. I have not played the 3DS version that much because it's ugly, it's slow, it's just janky and it's just not pleasant. Well, I would like to call this an HD version of the 3D version because, you know, it pretty much has everything that the uh, like, and all the missions that the 3DS version had, Legends, but it has the Wii U's multiplayer function and it also has the challenge mode which is pretty much a massive bulk of the grinding that I had to do to finish the game off, but it also has the two boss characters as well being the Cuckoo and Ganon which the 3DS version didn't have. So that's actually a plus right there. Of course you got all the costumes, including the promotional content. I can confirm that this game has all the DLC, including the promotional DLC, which includes all the costumes from the Wii U version and all of the My Fairy stuff from the 3DS version. So all that's in here. Because as soon as I unlocked My Fairy, um, I already had like a couple of costume selections. I never picked any of them up, so that confirms that. Um, they may not be the exact same ones, but they, if they are being supplemented, then you'll be able to go to get the others throughout the maps as well. I can also confirm. 1080p, 60 frames, so that is good. Even in multiplayer, it's 10 it's 1080p, 60 frames. The graphics didn't take a toll, or take a hit at all. The frame rate didn't lower. I mean, it did stutter a couple of times. That's if we were both doing flash attacks. Um, the only thing that did actually happen was that the enemies kind of reduced, but you don't really feel that really. As soon as you hit enemies, right before they poof, a new enemies immediately spawn in when you're playing multiplayer. So that's really good. And they kept the um, multi. The, the multi-warriors surrounding the boss monster bonuses that you get, like two warriors equals like more damage and recoverable magic and stuff like that, and so they kept that from the previous version as well. It's basically just both of them fused together. You can even switch your warriors during gameplay. So I don't really need to say anything much about all else. Um, most of my um, guides for the original High Warriors on Wii U may not apply to this, except for the boss uh, level grinding guide, mainly because um, to grind up the bosses like Ganon and the Cuckoo, there is still no bizarre um, accessibility to level them up, which is a real big shame. So that means you have to grind them the old-fashioned way once again to level 255. That's to the maximum. But other than that, it is pretty much the most definitive version you can get. You can't go wrong. Plus you have the Breath of the Wild uh, bonus costumes in here as well, which is exclusive to this version. So yeah, it literally has anything, all the promotional DLC, all of the updates, stuff that was added, literally everything in this version. This is going to take a while to beat. Ooh, how exciting. This is great. Well, hey, Spyro. Yes, as I've said before, um, I've actually mentioned this a few times because, you know, I might as well talk about it here. Um, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, obviously, I haven't actually got it, but it has been pre-ordered for me for my birthday. So it comes out on the 21st of September, which is the 25th anniversary of Spyro. We'll have this, we'll be doing Let's Plays of it, and I have heard rumours of they're adding more orb challenges, but they could probably just, you know, restore what was missing from uh, Spyro 2, and that might actually be what the rumour's coming off of. But if that's the case, we'll have to cover those bonus episodes because we've never played them before. But we've got the Let's Play coming up for this game, so when we get to that point, when it comes out, that'll be pretty awesome. But Wait for it. It's coming through Amazon though, by the way, so we're not going to have any of this, any of these uh, uh, like delivery delays that we had with, you know, the muck up on completely forgetting to even deliver Kingdom Hearts 2.8 or, you know, um, South Park Fracture by Hole coming later. So that is going to be entirely avoided. We're going to get this on release day. Yeah. And finally, this one's um, pretty obscure. I don't know how to say this, but Simon Kamiya got this to me as a bonus on, alongside the uh, ticket that she got me for MCM Comic Con this year, of uh, 20, May 26th, I've said. But 200 games in one Metro TV games by Orb Gaming. I do not know what to say about this. It's obviously a plug and play, probably an NES on a chip. Um, Probably AV composite, but I'm not too sure. I may cover this or something, I don't know. I might actually ask in the Discord, uh, link in the description below, by the way, one uh, one whole day um, invitation link, um, if you want me to do, like, reviews or, like, just show off some of the plug and plays that I do actually have. Um, that could be a fun time. I may even do that myself. But, basically, um, this thing runs on three AAA batteries. It says relive the hours of video game nostalgia with these mini TV games, which I... 
don't really know considering that the photos I do not recognize and even though that the um, webcam quality with autofocus or the lightness uh, lightness the light may not actually say so looking at myself they are really reduced quality versions of what they're supposed to be and that's about eight bit standards it's like someone just made the picture smaller in paint but um, yeah I mean I don't really see like any um, obvious games on those four images that I would consider nostalgic but even not to my personal taste but in just a general sense of the NES times I mean they could just be ROM hacks I don't know but um, yeah I don't know what, what to say about this if you guys want me to check this out on the channel then please let me know either in the comments in the description below or on the discord or on social media links are down there as well um, but yeah um, I don't know what to say about this but thanks Georgina anyway because that's actually interesting because I've never actually seen this in stores before I wonder what's next. Time for the update half of this video, which I normally tack on at the end so I don't have to, you know, make a completely different video for it. Might as well do it both at once because it could be related to the stuff that we have here, as I've said already, with Spyro uh, Trilogy, we'll be getting all of that whenever. But first of all, I must stress that because of, like, work life and personal life and stuff like that, um, daily uploads may not be possible all the time so if i do accidentally skip a couple of days or so don't worry i'm not dead i'm just busy so keep that in mind first of all i would like to actually mention that we're going to be going back to final fantasy 6 once the ocarina of time versus with blue hotel man 17 finishes mainly because that we're coming close to it and i want to cover the gba content now i've actually got to where we were on the ps1 version on the pc version so we're going to be playing on the pc version onwards in order to cover that stuff so from continuing from where we left off four years ago by actually beating the game we're going to be continuing on from there first we're going to cover the changes on the ios and pc versions because they're pretty similar and they are the most up-to-date versions that were released and after that we'll actually be jumping back into the game grabbing all the new espers and doing the two dungeons that were added so look forward to that once we are done with all that because the final fantasy 6 stuff isn't going to go on for too long um, and Kingdom Hearts will probably be near the end at that point, considering the speed that we've been going for the game, it's actually been pretty fast even for my standards. But, what I've been wanting to do, and I've been wanting to talk about this for ages, and I want to announce it now. I want to be doing a, one, a true 100% walkthrough of a hat in time. There's the card right there. Now, here's the thing. Since I've played the game when it came out, or roughly when it came out, I got it on like soon after Christmas, uh, that's just passed. Um, throughout pretty much this entire like year so far, I've already played it like three times through. The game on PC now has modding as part of the core game. You don't have to clock down to modding support beta in order to use mods. I have been on the Discord and I've like talked to people and like like try to like gather all the information needed in order to perfect my route for a true 100% and when I mean true 100% I don't mean 100% as long as like oh you got all 40 time pieces and your file says 100% you get a star what I mean is true 100% as in all 88 or 89 yarn which means you know all the yarn from both the PC version and the console versions the, the different one being the PC version there's a few changes but that'll be all 88 87 88 89 yarn that'll be all of the um rift tokens there'll be all of the relics all 28 achievements and the three additional achievements that were added due to the modding being part of the main game which is exclusive to the pc version which means there is actually another star that you can get on your save file as well you have to get 30 mod tokens and the way to get mod tokens is not just grabbing rift tokens in a mod you have to grab the timepiece and that becomes a token and then that gets added to that count and you can see that only on your save file and i'll probably be doing a separate series once we get to that point just covering different mods completing them showcasing them off giving my thoughts and when we get to like the final one we'll have that as part of the main pro project and that'll be probably the final episode truthfully plus not only that but there is dlc or expansion packs i would like to call it because they're free coming out soon for the hat in time as well the first uh dlc slash uh, update or expansion pack which is like once again for free well is going to be adding um a local multiplayer on all devices plus online multiplayer for the pc version and it'll also be having an additional chapter because there's five chapters worth of levels so they'll be ad adding an additional chapter worth of levels 
don't know what if it's going to be after game or if it's just you know another part of the story or if it's just there because why not but that'll be pretty fun as well and that will probably be done blind so that'll be something to look forward to and plus there's another dlc pack coming out at some point because there's two of them but we don't know anything about the second one for now so that's the end for this what's the stress video like i said once again sorry for being late if anyone was expecting it but you know people expect the update video to go alongside it as i always do uh but yeah we have um a couple of surprises we had the mcm uh comic con ticket we had that plug and play which i've never seen before so that may be interesting if we decided to cover that the dock shield the little squid the little um screwdrivers that's what it was um you never even see that hell even nico's scarf so i thought uh, that was like quite substantial in terms of little things it, the only problem was it all just took like a while to actually ha like have them all to present because it took so long because like you know Hyrule Warriors Definitive released on the 18th and the Amiibo didn't turn up until today so I mean I could have done it beforehand but that one that would be a bit of a disservice and a bit like oh sorry your thing didn't come late I'm not going to cover that so it's but it's just better to have it all there and cover them so that's it for the video as I've said in the links in the description below there'll be links to um, all the social media as well as discord that discord link will last for 24 hours I hope to see you on the discord please check out the patreon for um, any of the other perks remember we still have that South Park Stick of Truth PS4 download code to give away and considering that the PS4 version is region free it should work no matter where you are and if there is a problem we can sort that out but yes so with that guys I hope to see you for more Final Fantasy 6 when we finally return to that uh, more of the when the, vin the versus finishes, more of Kingdom Hearts, and of course when we f it finally comes out, Spyro. But with that, I'll see you for the next DLP, which will be a hat in time whenever I'll start that up, and I'll see you guys then.